start by, because one of the big things we need to be able to do in order to solve exponential and logarithmic equations is go from one form to the other to get what get out what we're interested in solving for. So if I have the exponential form 4 to the 5th is equal to 1,024, how would I write that in logarithmic form? So this is my exponential form. How am I going to write that in logarithmic form? What will that look like? What equals it? Okay, so he told me it's 5, because that's the exponent, equals log what? Base 4, because that's the base of my log exponential, of 1,024. What about this one? If I have 10 to the negative 2 is equal to 0 0.01, what would that look like in logarithmic form? Negative 2, Negative two equals, equals log, <coughs> ten. log base 10, which you can just leave as log, of 0 0.01. Now, LOG in web work is log base 10, and LN is natural log, <coughs> so it should be. And what about this one? 25 to the negative 3 halves is equal to 0 0.008. What would that look like in logarithmic form? Negative 3 halves equals log base 25 of 0 0.008. Notice when you're writing these, your base is a subscript. So it's down below. And this is not an exponent on the base. <coughs> now let's go the other way. Let's say I have log base 2 of 8 equals 3. What would that look like in exponential form? What's the base of my exponential function? 2, because that's the base of my logarithmic function. So 2. What's going to be the exponent? The 3, because remember, your logarithm is always equal to the exponent. And then that's going to be equal to what? 8. You guys are all going, okay, this seems really easy. And yes, it is. Once you get used to it, you're going, oh, this is simple. What if I finally have log base 5 of 25 equals 2? What will that look like when I change to exponential form? 5 squared. 5 squared equals 25. And actually, it's not finally because I think I have. No, I don't. All right. I should give you one, though. Let me, let me give one more up here. What if I have, oh, I don't want to do that. No, I will. The natural log of 2 equals x. What will that look like in exponential form? It'll, it'll be what? What's the base of this? E. So that's going to be the base of my exponential. What's the exponent that's going to be on my E? X, because remember my logarithm is always equal to the exponent. And then? E equals 2. I didn't want to put all numbers in there because I don't know what the natural log of hardly anything is. So I want it to be on the safe side. Now, let's look at a basic logarithmic function and decide what kind of graph it's going to have. So let's see, I'm going to look at log base 3 of x. First question. What is the domain of a logarithm? Well, we start with our domain questions. Is there a denominator? No. Is there a square root or an root? No. Is there a log or a natural log? Yes. Whenever you have a log or a natural log, you take the thing that's after the x. Now think about this. When we had our two different forms, what was that x equal to when it was in the other form? So when it, when it was in out of x, what form are Where was that x on 
on my y, well, I should probably say f of x equals a to the, uh, we'll call it, what letter do we want? Because I don't want to put x up there, that's a bad thing. And thanks, that's a variable. In here, which one of these things had been the x in the other form? Where was the x over here? What? Is it the n? It's the f of x part, right? It's the output. What can you tell me about outputs of exponential functions? What did we determine outputs of exponential function had about them? Remember when we graphed them? We said what kind of range did we have? Because that's the output. What were the ranges? What was the range? Can I take a positive number and raise it to a power and get a negative number? No, you remember asking that question on Sunday? Can I take a positive number, raise it to a power and get zero? No. So uh, this number could never be zero or, zero or negative. It always had to be positive. Well, that's where we get our information about how to find the domain in logarithmic functions. This thing called the argument of the logarithm has to be bigger than zero. So whatever that is, we set it bigger than zero and solve when we're finding the domain. And if you remember about exponential uh, inverse functions, the range of the original function was the same as the domain of the inverse. You guys remember that? And vice versa. And so that's where these are going to come in. Well, what was the domain of this thing? Of my basic exponential function? You guys remember that? It was all real numbers because we asked our five questions. No denominator, no square root or even root, no logs or natural logs. It didn't come from finding an inverse, and, and it wasn't a real world problem, so it was all real numbers. So what's going to be the range of this function? All real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. Because it's inverse. No, there's no It's inverse. a domain of all reals. That's why we don't even have to do anything. We can just say, well, we found the domain of the original, so this is the inverse function. What about running into the x-axis? So in other words, how are we going to run into the x-axis here? Why don't you grab, well, you can't. Graph your log base 10 of x on your calculator. You can't graph log base 3 on your calculator as it is. Later on, we will look at a way that you can graph log base 3. Yeah, so just log x. And you might want to make your window different from the one that we used for the drug problem. Does it run into the x-axis? Yes, it does. tell exactly where, but how in general do we find x-intercepts? Set y equal to zero. So basically I would need to solve this function, this equation, zero equals log base three of x. Yes? Now believe it or not, this is considered a simple equation to solve. You want to solve any logarithmic equation where the thing you're trying to get to is after your log, it's the argument of your logarithm, then the way to go is to change.